be taking you through a quick guide on how to use the LMS. So we'll be going through the basic activities of how to create courses, assignments, and quizzes. So once you log in, once you go to LMS, the LMS site, this is the first page you see, which is the home page. So as you can see, these are some of the courses, the category of courses that we have. So the first thing you need to do is just click on login. So once you get to the login page, enter your login details. So we wait for it to load. So once you're logged in, this is your dashboard. So as you can see, the tabs are quite self-explanatory. So this is the badge, the calendar and all. But the basic thing you need to focus on as a lecturer is going to be how to create courses. So you come to this site menu, administration, site administration. So go to courses, click on it, manage courses and categories. So click on that. So once you're there, these are the list of categories we have. So currently, as you can see, we categorized based on school, main campus, Western campus, and you can see the schools under each of them. So this is College of Economics and Management. So we click on College of Economics and Management. So we create a course under this category. So once you click that category, as you can see, we have it here. It says College of Economics and Management. Then we have Create New Course. So all you need to do is just click on this. So we are here. So we need to create the new course now. The course full name, let's say it's Economics. Economic study. So the short name we can have SCS one o one. That's based on the short name of the course that you are creating. This is the category. We don't have to change this since we already know. But if you made a mistake, you can actually correct it from here. So this saying course visibility show we want it to show so we click on show because sometimes you might create courses but you don't want it to show up yet then you can hide it then when you're ready for it to show up you just go to ed go and edit it then make it show up then the course start date and the course end date this enables us create courses that have a a time frame to run so Let's say, for example, you want a course to just run for a month, so you create the starting date and the end date. But since if you don't want it to run, you just disable this. So starting date is enabled, but it doesn't have an ending date, so you leave it. This course ID number is not necessary to be filled. The course summary, you can just give a brief summary of the course this is going to appear on the front end so students would have an idea of the course they are going into you can see this is for first year Students, this course will introduce you to the economic world. 
So you practically just give a description of the entire idea of the course. So once that is done, the course image, it's always good you ha um, have an image for your course. It makes it appear nice in the front end. So what you need to do is just click. When you click, click upload file. Then you select the file from your computer, the file you want to upload. So once you select that, you go to the file, then you pick the file you want to upload. So once that is done, you just click upload this file. So when you click upload this file, it's going to upload the file for you. So you can move from here. Then you go to course format. This is also very important. How do you want the courses to run? Are you creating a course based on topics or weekly courses whereby you want to put them um, a particular set of courses under a particular week or you want to create them based on topics? That's going to be a decision of the lecturer and how the course is supposed to run. So you click that to select it. The number of section you want to. So let's say, for example, we want to run weekly. Let's click weekly. The page is going to load up to. So we have weekly number of section. You select that to. Particularly the number of weeks you want to have. Let's say the course is going to run for four weeks and all. So you select that. So hidden sections so how do you want the sections that are not showing let's say for example now we are in week one how about the week two and the rest how do you want it to show so do you want it to be in collapse form or you want it to sections to be completely invincible so when they get there before they were able to see it or you want them to be able to see it in collapse form so you decide that also then the course layout show all sections in one page or show one section in a particular page so you can decide that also but if you have a section if you have sections that are much you might want to put one section in a particular page so you go from one page to the other so it doesn't look too cumbersome when somebody just open up for the first time so appearance some of these things you might not need to have them if you're going to be having announcements then you want to add it but if not you might want to click zero you might it's also good depending on how you want to do it so you can actually periodically put up announcements edit the announcement section for your students to see so you want it to show activity reports another thing you can do also is when you get confused about what a particular field is about this question mark button is actually going to give you an idea of what you need to do there so now this one says show grade book to student what does that mean you see many activities in the course allow grades to be set. These settings determine whether a student can view a list of all the grades for the course via a grade link in the navigation drawer. So do you want students to be able to see the grades, how, what they will get at the end of the day, or you don't want it to show until they actually take it or something. So you decide that. Another thing is over time, the more you use it, the better you get. So file upload. What is the limit? You can just leave the limit for 64 for now. That's the default that has been set. So completion tracking. How do you want the courses to run? Do you want to be able to track each student when they enroll for the course? So it will tell you the progress of each student when you check them. Well, if you want that, you click yes. If not, you put it as no. Then groups, just click, then you read no group. So you read, it tells you what it means. 
this you don't have to you practically don't have business with that too except if you really understand how it works so for now we filled the basic information so let's go straight to adding activities where we add the course content assignments and quizzes and all so click save and display so this will take you to a page where you can actually add activities so as you can see we selected weekly this tour that came up now is actually a quick message it's going to tell you how to navigate but you might think that once you start once you have your account and you logged in it's advisable you take the tour so it gives you an idea of different how the interface is and what each section is all about so i'm going to close it for now so as you can see we selected four sections and the format we selected is weekly format so we have here 27th to 2nd of august 3rd of august to 9th 10th to 16th 17th to 23rd of august so as you can see it has section it's based on the starting date which is to which is m27 that i selected from the settings so the next thing you want to do now is you want to turn on editing turn editing on so it's going to load up this is going to enable you edit each week and add activities based on the week so we have week one now you can decide to edit this and maybe you don't want it to show as week one you want it to give it another name let's say i want to add first week depending on what you're creating first week so it's going to change so you can edit that also then for week one you can use this edit to hide the week you can edit the week you can delete it then also add activity so here is the main thing so you click add activity what do you want to add for the first week let's say for example you want to have content first then after that probably after a couple of contents then you have assignments and all then you have quizzes lesson so what kind of content do you want to create so you select the kind of content you want to create here so you can decide to just put let's see we so this package resources pages so we can decide to do pages we can decide to do other file so depending on what you want to achieve that is what is going to determine what you select from here so if you want to create some kind of lesson for that particular week whereby the student takes the first thing then moves to the second one probably multiple topic on the first week and it's going to be progressive you can decide to choose lesson then depending on what you want to achieve so as you can see also once you click it tells you it gives you a breakdown a description of how it actually works the page model enables a teacher to create a web page resources using a text editor a page can edit text images sound and all so depending on what you achieve what you want to achieve like i said it will determine the kind of activity you want to add so let's say we are adding page now add page so once we add the page enter the topic of that page so let's say introduction to economics so description let's put a description this is the description section so so put 
fill it based on what. Then here is the content that you want to display on the page. So whatever content you want to display on the page, you put it up here. So this will determine the content you want to put up on the page. So you add the main page content here. I've copied some text, so I'll just paste it. So you can add picture from here. You can add videos, you can add audio and all. So these are practically the things you can add. So it's quite flexible whereby whatever you want to add majorly you can easily add it here if you want a link to a youtube page a yeah a youtube video or something that you want to add just copy the youtube link paste it where necessary it's actually going to automatically embed it into your content so students will be able to see the video from here but it's actually hosted on youtube so they will be able to watch. So you add the contents, the page contents here, the appearance. You want it to display the page name, the page description, and all. So at the end of the day, one thing you still want to do is at once you create a course, you want to go to the front end to actually take a look at what you've created. Do you need to edit some things? You need to adjust some things because many a times once you do it, you might need to just twist some things to make it look okay. So activity, do you want student can manually mark if they are done because you want to be able to know you want the student to actually take the course and complete it. But if you don't want them to mark, you have to set the conditions for them to meet and be able to get that so students must what view activity to complete it so students can't just mark it complete they have to view it for it to be complete you want to add tags these tags are actually going to help when they are searching on the entire website so you might want to add things like economics stuff like that that will make search easy for your students once they want to take the course. Competence, you might not need to really worry about that. Then, but if you want to, just read about it. Then we have save and display. Save and return, we actually take you back to the course, but since we are not done yet, we want to save and display. So we see what we have. So as we can see, we have introduction to economics, then we have this written here. So. so we might need to go back. So we can see just an overview of what we've just created then let's go back to the main so you just click this so we have week one under week one we have introduction to economics so you can how you can see now you have an idea of how it's actually going to display introduction to economics let's say the next topic is something like what is economics depending on what you have then maybe at the end of all the topics you want to add a quiz or you want to give an assignment you just click assignment then you add it so once you add the assignment you fill the necessary information how long do you want the assignment to be available how do you want them to submit it things like that so you set the grades notifications and or submission settings so these are actually flexible so you might need to play around with it to actually have a full idea of how it fully works 
So it's actually saying I must have a name before I can save and continue. Since I don't want that, I'll just go back for now. So once you have that, you just add it. So that's how you have add activities to each week. Then probably at the end of the fifth week, you want to add a quiz to actually score the student at the end of the day. It all depends on the curriculum and what you want to achieve as a lecturer. So basically, it's quite simple to navigate but you can't actually get to use it until you actually use it. You won't fully understand how it works until you take your time to navigate, to move around, create your own courses, edit your courses, make sure it comes out the way you want it to come out. If not, go back and edit it. But one thing is very important. You have to give time to it. You have to do it. If you don't work with it, you can't understand it. So, I think that covers the basic thing on how to add activities and all. So basically just click, then select the kind of activity you want to add. You see the activity that you've added. Student goes from the front end and enroll. You can add from here too. You can see this is a general settings the whole system participants you want to enroll them you come here your report you can see the report activity completion course completion just click it takes you there the activities so you see the general overview it's just something you have on the front too but it's here also the question bank let me just quickly explain what question bank means is let's say for example you're creating a quiz you have to you enter your questions with the answers but you can use question bank to import questions and all and you save it in question bank whereby you can always reuse the question in probably another course or you want to you're not ready to use it yet you just want to store it you can store it in the question bank then when you need it you just go and pick it's just like having a couple of like a set of questions where you have saved and this test is coming instead of creating the course um, questions all over again you just go to your question bank you select the question you want to add then you add it to the activity so basically that's just a quick overview of how you navigate and make use of the module the KIO module learning management system. So if you have any questions, please don't forget to get back to us. We we'll do our best to always be available to take your questions and answer your questions to the best of our ability. We don't expect you to just grab everything all at once, but like I said earlier, you need to take time to study the system, give it time, navigate through get familiar with the environment, which is very, very important. So when you want to do something, you don't have to start moving all around, just trying to create courses. So I hope this helped. Thank you for watching. We hope to hear from you. Thank you.